Hi guys, my name is Sean. I'm a houseplant enthusiast from Jakarta, Indonesia. Welcome to this episode where I'm going to be giving you a final tour of Floy Convex, an international scale plant event where there are a lot of really cool vendors, a lot of really cool new products coming to the market, interesting trends, interesting way to style the plants. And in case you missed the last three episodes, please do go back and see them because they're all interesting. They're actually totally about two and a half hours long, but I've broken it down to four segments so that they are all digestible so that we can actually zoom in on each plants without being a little bit too overwhelming for you guys. We're going to start with the Indonesian Ministry of Agriculture. I met up with him and he gave a brief speech on the current conditions of horticulture in Indonesia and also his aspirations. Then there's also the tissue culture of rare plants here. Some dark anthuriums from Tujuan Bumi. We actually had an episode that was filmed there before. There are some Hoyas, some Indonesian endemic plants, some bromeliads, and some rare variegated aeroids, including like a lot of variegated anthuriums. Now we also look at some show quality philodendron biliotai and they are huge. They're as big as a van. It's such a wonderful treat to be able to get up close and personal to with these specimens and to interview the owner. We also visit the plant export booth and I explain a little bit about how people can actually just come to this event and there will be export papers done on the spot and take these plants back home with them. And at the end of the episode, I was actually tasked to judge for the number one plant in the whole event because this whole event had many, many categories of plants. So basically they gathered all of the number ones across all genuses and made us choose the one that we think should deserve the number one spot. And it's an interesting one. Oh, and I forgot to mention that where possible, I will include the price on the screen. So when you check out the name of the plant, there may be a US dollar price on top, just in case you want to know how much these plants cost. But again, not all of these plants are labeled, so a lot of them are not going to have prices on them. But feel free to reach out to some of them. I know that you guys are living abroad in case you wanted to inquire about importing and exporting. And I have a feeling that all of these booths do export. Bahwa di negara tropis itu hampir semua jenis tanaman dan varietas tanaman kita bisa miliki. Ya, betul. Kalau Indonesia itu punya dataran rendah, pantai, bukit-bukit dan gunung-gunung dengan kuntur tanah. Cuacanya juga berubah-berubah. Iya. Sehingga macam-macam tanaman hias sudah lihat ya. begitu bagus. Betul. Dan tanaman hias di negara tropis ini tentu sangat punya daya tahan untuk dibawa ke mana aja. Betul. Termasuk ke negara-negara subtropis, misalnya ke Eropa, ke Amerika. Ya. Dan hari ini dengan kita tampil dengan semacam expo seperti itu meyakinkan uh, internasional bahwa ya tanaman-tanaman yang bersumber dari Indonesia memiliki esotik yang luar biasa dan daya tariknya. Betul. Dan ini juga mulai kelihatan banyak tanaman endemik dari Indonesia yang mulai dibudidayakan, ada yang juga di tissue culture yang mulai muncul. Nah itu moga-moga kalau stoknya udah banyak, kita bisa siap nih ekspor tanaman endemik Indonesia. Iya. Ya. Dan ekspor harus dimulai. Ya, tahun harus. juga kita harus makin kuat. Ya. Yang lalu juga udah kuat, tetapi ini dengan rekayasa genetik, perkawinan-perkawinan, Hmm. Uh, genetika yang ada, ya. kita memiliki variasi yang sangat menarik, sangat banyak, nah, dan mantap. punya daya tahan yang lebih kuat. Ya. We actually visited this booth yesterday, but today they have some interesting rare plants. This is a tissue cultured booth. There was endemic plants yesterday, but today we have the Alocasia Friday variegated. And we also have Cercestis mirabilis coming into tissue culture. This is some samples. And then there are some anthuriums, interestingly, even though they're often sown by seedlings very, very cheaply and readily. This is, I think, the silver blush, if I'm not wrong. Now, the salesperson explained that the reason why they're being tissue cultured is because because you can reach a standardized size within a standardized period of time. This is a variegated banana. It's a cute little tiny baby from tissue culture. 
This next plant is the variegated philodendron UPI. How crazy is this? Each leaf costs a lot of money. And in this particular booth, everybody's packing up. This is actually the last day in the evening. I'm really happy to see people doing well with sales. This is Tujuan Bumi. He is an anthurium collector and hybridizer and also a seller. He has some grow lights, so feel free to check it out on his Instagram. His grow light is used to maximize dark leaves on anthuriums. He's tried different settings and this is the one that he's found more favorable. This one anthurium called out to me is called the Anthurium Carla Blackie Eye. It's 2200 US dollars. This is crazy. He told me that he flew this in. This particular plant really called out to me. I had no idea what it was before but there's something about the darkness of the leaves but the shine as well. The light tint of blue in it. So to join Bumi I specialize in dark leaf anthurium so if you're into that kind of thing please do reach out to him. He does export. This year this is one of his hybrids he called it anthurium obelisk it's a hoffmanii crossed with a luxuriance there are some seedlings down below and he's about to whip out the parent plant photo so the left and the right that's the mommy and daddy they look slightly different but they both have dark leaves so they're he's really breeding them for the trait of having dark leaf when you create hybrids the babies will all differ from one another some of them will exhibit features more like the father some will exhibit more like the mother this one in my hand this is the largest one of the siblings so you can see what it kind of looks like now and this is a close-up look of that grow light it's got like red and blue hues that I don't understand but it's supposed to bring out those dark color in the anthurium leaves it's supposed to promote it this is the anthurium ace of spades tezula and it's a dark form I'm not familiar with this species but it's actually very very expensive and it's very very rare so if you're into dark leaf anthuriums one more time he is the guy you can go to although there are a lot of anthurium sellers around do poke around and see which one fits you well and which ones you trust most and all of them have different kinds of characteristics all of them are curated a little bit differently this one is the anthurium king clarinervium and even that is a little bit dark next we have namiri plant she is a hoya enthusiast and seller this is a crazy crazy long hoya carnosa compacta regalis it's a variegated one look at the new growth here it actually grows pretty fast once it's reached a certain size because there's enough leaf to help photosynthesize but when you start them from when they were small they put out a new leaf every six months or so and this one you can tell that it's put out like a few rows at the, at the same time so that's great but he she explained to me that she had this plant for five years it took her five years to grow it to this size and it was actually sold so somebody has already bought it I'm really really happy to hear that it was probably a very expensive purchase and it was probably blood, sweat and tears for her to raise this plant. This is actually very prone to mealybugs and it's also very very unforgiving with overwatering. And it can also wrinkle up if you underwater it and it's really difficult to bring them back. Here is a variegated begonia. I actually had to ask them if this was like a chemically induced variegation because it looks so dreamy and they thought that no this is actually a, a normal and stable variegation. So I guess it's interesting to see variegated begonias coming into the market. Now I just found out that the Hoya Rosita was a hybrid between Hoya Wayerii and Hoya Sangiai. This is interesting to me. I thought it was a species on its own but this is what it looks like and it's a Hoya that really really sun stresses beautifully. This is the Hoya Clemensorium. We might have seen that in last week's episode. They are also becoming quite popular. These very Jurassic looking Hoya. And one thing that I really like about it is that it's got this really masculine very butch vibes but then it flowers so all hoyas flower and this really interesting and rugged plant will put out beautiful flowers at some point and i really love this hanger that he has it's basically made with like cotton twine now the hoya roots can actually root into the twine so you can just kind of tangle it up on the along the twine and it will root into it how cute is that it kind of replicates the consistency of bark which they love to root into this is a hoya sumantra so i'm guessing it's coming from the Sumatra region but it's got really really interesting leaves it's got really nice shape and also some splash this is the Hoya undulata we saw some forms in last week's video this is a more common form I would say I think I have do I have it I don't know I have so many plants by now that I don't remember if I have
have certain plants. There are a lot more popular Hoyas around here. This is the Hoya latifolia, if I'm not wrong. Look at how beautiful and sun stressed the leaves look, the veins and everything. This is such a perfect leaf. My goodness, I love Hoyas, but the problem is I have a hard time with them. I'm an overwaterer and they do need specific care. You cannot just hose them down whenever you feel like it, like you would with an air ride. <laughs> Look at the cute tiny leaves that is coming from this. I love looking at baby Hoya leaves, but you gotta be careful not to knock them off. <laughs> and this is a Hoya uh, Waim Waimainiai Borneo. We actually, again, we saw a Waimainiai that splash yesterday and it's looks a lot cleaner than this. Some people like this rugged kind of look. Looks like some animal has pooped on it. Maybe this is a survival strategy. And this one here, this is a beautiful Hoya on a trellis. Look at the leaves. How elegant is that black vein and the black rim. This Hoya is called the, I'm waiting for the name to appear on the screen. Give it a minute. Give it a, okay. Hoya Crassipel Crassipetiolata. Crassipetiolata. I sometimes struggle with plant Latin, but I don't know, it comes pretty easy for me. I think more people butcher it than me. So yeah, there are a lot more Hoyas in this contraption. I really like when you have a lot of Hoyas and you hang them in this cotton twine. This is a Hoya flagellata. Oh, it looks a little bit like the Hoya caudata. It's got nice silver specks on the leaves. This is a more lemony yellow Hoya. And it's really, really uh, quite interesting. I love petting them. I love it. It's like petting a kind of a reptile skin. This is the Hoya pachyclada variegated. And this one, the variegation is on the inside. It's called the, I don't know, I just call it the variegated reverse. But I'm sure the variegated reverse would be a much slower grower than the regular variegated form. The Hoya pachyclada is actually a very easy and fast growing Hoya. I mean, the, the green form. I don't have the variegated one yet. But I actually do recommend it for beginner and if you like foliage this is also a hoya that rewards you with beautiful succulent leaves in this refreshing light green color next we have the arraigned nursery it's kind of difficult to pronounce but they have a lot of endemic plants and this cutie i love this little plant it's a spatiphyllum silver streak it's actually one of those dwarf spatiphyllums that remain small and you know that they remain small because it's already in flower even despite their small size and they have this amazing stripe down the middle it looks silverish even though it's really not it kind of looks a little bit like a different bakia from far apart from far away and i don't know something about this especially when they form a clump it looks really really nice this is an aglonema rotundum x victim tricolor and this is one plant that has the best traits from both parents both the mom and dad because this is fast growing this is actually quite easy to grow and then the variegation or rather the pattern is very very stable unlike the tricolor it's actually got glossy leaves, even though the Pictum tricolor has more of a suede leaf. This is called the Homalumina silver. I'm not sure the exact Latin name of this. A lot of Homaluminas are not properly described, but they are all in the aeroid family. This is really, really cute. This is a red humilis. It's got like red underside and it remains rosette. But these kind of Homa Lumina, in my experience, tend to flower a lot. Maybe even at this size, they have reached maturity, which is why they're always flowering profusely. I'm always like racing, trying to pluck off the flowers. This plant, I'm not sure exactly what it is, but I'm, I'm guessing it's an aeroid. The flower, the inflorescence is a little bit mysterious. It could have been an aeroid inflorescence. Do comment down below if you know what that species is. These guys are not for beginners. They actually like it very humid. They like their media a bit damp. They don't want to dry out completely, but they can also rot very easily in my climate here. This is a really, really gorgeous Gindapsus pictus exotica variegata. I'm going to be saving up for this. I'm also going to wait for the price to come down, but look at how picturesque the leaf is. My goodness, there are a lot of variegated skindapsis here. And this is a Milano chrysum that's variegated. And this one has particularly nice variegation, especially back here where all the leaves seem to be variegated. Not many people have grown massive specimens of these. I guess people keep cutting them up. And so we are only seeing the small sizes. This is a spatiphyllum, but I'm not sure the variety. I really am dying to know the name. I could not Google it and search all over YouTube for it. If you know what this spatiphyllum variety is, please comment down 
down below because I do have a few of them and I don't know what to name them. This is an Aridarum species. This is actually an aquatic plant or at least an aquarium type plant. When I did a Google search on them, I really am fond with their leaf texture. Look at that. This looks like a very expensive leather wallet from like Bottega Veneta. And this here, this is a Philodendron Boromax Fantasy that is mature. I'm, I'm not sure if they can actually get bigger than this, but this is pretty big to me considering how small people usually display them or buy them as. This is like some massive leaves, but its loss is silver streak. So it may be a plant that loses the silver streaks at it re as it reaches a mature size. If that's the case, I might actually keep mine juvenile for as long as possible. This is Momo's plants and something caught my eye here. This skin dapsis, I believe it's a Trubii moonlight variegated, although it does look to me more like the SP Sumatra rather than the Trubii variegated uh, because the Sumatra actually has this uh, more pronounced silver lines than the Trubii moonlight. But I really love the contraption. Look at how lush it is down below. I love that there's a semi arc uh, plastic pipe behind it that kind of keeps it tucked in place. It looks a little bit better than a moss pole if you ask me. So maybe this is something that you might want to replicate with some of your climbing aeroids, especially skin dapsis. Now these are common plants, but my goodness, they deserve a minute of our time. They actually are a gorgeous plant. They're easy to come by. They're very, very affordable. This is basically a variegated ficus, uh, ficus elastica, a, a rubber tree. Each variegation is different. Now I do struggle with mine, so I don't know how to care for it properly yet. It does seem to like it very bright, but it can also burn. Now this booth belongs to Pak Chandra. He's a legendary collector here in Indonesia. He's responsible for bringing a lot of mother plants here. He does have a bromeliad nursery, which actually we actually trespassed a few episodes ago. And I would love to be back there to film more bromeliad episodes because look at how beautiful this is. A lot of bromeliads are very underrated. People think that they are just landscaping plants or like your grandparents' plants. But let's bring them back. Let's bring them back into trend because they're actually quite beautiful, quite electrifying. They're soothing to look at because they are so symmetrical. They're really, really not pretty when they're admired from eye level, but also as pretty when viewed from up above. There's also many, many species. There's many varieties. There's also many, many hybrids of them. They look really good under direct sunlight. A lot of them can actually take some direct sunlight and they actually would look good under some night spotlight. This, are, this is probably a rarer bromeliad because it, we don't see it often and it's probably very expensive. The name is on the screen. It's got such complicated pattern on the leaves and the shape of the leaves look interesting as well. It kind of reminds me of some air plants actually and they are all in the same family. So in, they're in a bromeliaceae family. This one, look at this. This is like brush strokes, like genius brush strokes on a plant. It looks like someone put nail polish on this fella. Now we can take a step back and actually appreciate the composition here. Now you can pile bromeliad over bromeliad or you can actually mix them in with other plants whether you want a more greener foliage or you can pile in other colorful plants. The, some direct sun loving plants are coleus and cordylines, maybe even like uh, caladiums but also aglonemas if you have a deeper shade but aglonemas do need it very bright. This is the flower of most bromeliads. They're actually really really beautiful and showy flowers but they don't last for a very long time. This is a platycerium. Now Pak Chandra also has a platycerium nursery so this is probably one of the work. This is a gorgeous specimen and it's actually uh, was entered in the show because it's got like a label on it. It looks like an intricate sculpture that is like standing tall and proud. This is really really beautiful. I believe this is a platycerium wandai. Look at the new baby leaf that is, not leaf, sorry, frond, a baby frond that is trying to vomit out. It's so beautiful. It looks like a crazy lettuce from outer space. It's got like greenish, that is very, the green that is very soothing, but it's also got like a tint of blue and the composition, my goodness, it looks like a person's face as well. And now we have like a more serious landscaping situation here with a water feature. This is really, really great. I really enjoy seeing this 
put into a trade show all this effort that's putting out that's irene also from living around she's in literally all of these four episodes because we keep running into each other as she is touring the booth but anyways I really like that they put the effort in here to put the water feature which actually brings a lot of air movement here and very soothing water sound. There's some fern down there. I believe this is probably a microsorum but I could be wrong because of the growth pattern. It's got really really nice pattern on the leaves. And this is a variegated thermophyllum. I'm not sure which variety this is but they actually make really good landscaping. They will add a, such a nice pop of color and a really really strong tropical vibes to uh, landscape. This is a philodendron UPI, some syngonium scrambled eggs. This is actually a variegated uh, syngonium Wenlandia, if I'm not wrong. The syngonium Wenlandia, it looks really, really good in landscaping. They provide this pop of color. This philodendron, I don't know what this is. I'm guessing this is a serpent, but it's got really really beautiful petiole. This is the uh, philodendron that really have, you have to admire at eye level. This is a philodendron hau or the king of spades created by Mr. Haji Uli here right here in Indonesia. We don't really know what the parentage is but we just know that it's got like a really really beautiful leaf shape, dramatic veins and the new leaves come out completely like maroon. It's very very dramatic plant and it's got such beauty to it. And down below this is a Anthurium pterodactyl, variegated. This is actually one of the more, not common, quote unquote more common variegated Anthurium because after this we're gonna see a lot more of the Anthuriums that is like very very uncommon such as this one here. It's the Ace of Spades variegated. Who knew that Anthuriums would be yellow when they're variegated? I've always pictured them to be more like a white kind of variegation but apparently they do come out really really really, really bright yellow. This is a beautiful bromeliad, but we're going to do a light test. As you can see on the bottom right hand corner, there is a spotlight and it's pointed somewhere else. Now I've moved the spotlight so that it's facing the leaves. So we can now play some shadow puppets underneath the leaves. I just wanted to show how bromeliads actually look when in landscaping when you have proper light shining on them. They really illuminate the whole area and you really can see the features in the leaves. There are a lot of pattern and details. It looks like very delicate brush strokes. I really really actually love bromeliads. I actually killed the only bromeliad that I have but I really need to start learning about this genus and start memorizing their plant ID so I'm not always second guessing my bromeliads. Look at how, how translucent this actually is. Now this is probably a more expensive bromelia. This is not as common as some of the other ones. So Indo Aeroid, which is owned by Pak Chandra, is like legendary when it comes to rare plants. Again, he brought a lot of mother plants into Indonesia. He's been like growing them for over 30 years. And he has some of the rarest plants and his team, I have to salute his team because they have really, really great skills, great knowledge, and they really, really are selective with the kind of plants that they are producing this is a really really wonderfully variegated anthurium look at that this is a very complicated anthurium it's got some mintiness in the variegation and some solid in there too there's actually a few of these coming to the market they're relatively new i saw my first variegated anthurium only I don't know, sometime like nine months ago. People probably had them, but I don't think they had them in stock and ready for sale like it is now. It's now considered available for public purchase. Now the price on these are still pretty exuberant because they are still so rare. But once people can start attaining them and posting them on Instagram, this is going to explode like crazy. This is a Philodendron Luxuriance and I'm going to have a look at the leaf because I actually have one that I'm rehabbing from Equigenera. Now this boot here, Plant the plants. He's got some massive, massive rare aeroids. So this one is the Monstera. Oh, I tripped on something in the episode. Look at how big this leaf is. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous plant. Not only the leaf shape and the form and the health of the plant. Sorry, this is the ocean man before I lose the plant ID. But the variegation it's amazing it's, it's not your regular variegated monstera again it's called the ocean mint so it's like very like mojito type model variegation and this is a huge philodendron biliotai and i was actually given a little bit of history on this guy look at how big this is first of all it's some of the biggest one that i've seen and this would definitely cost 
a lot of money and they're actually really nice when you appreciate them from down below this is forming a rosette pattern which is going to suggest that it's been living under a shade cloth getting 360 degrees view of the sky every leaf is variegated beautifully look at this and there's actually very very little or in fact there's no defects on these leaves that's because this plant used to be a winner. So this was actually a number one winner from for a plant contest. I can't remember which show it was, but I think it's very deserving of it because for the plant shows, you do need to have a really, really nice rare plant that is like wonderfully variegated all around. You also need to have them be, be cared in pristine conditions so that they don't have any kind of defect on the leaves. And a lot of them still di display some of the younger leaves down below. So this is one such specimen. I believe this one was around three years old. The person actually bought it about three years ago and it was actually still a medium size. So they're not the fastest growing. I mean, they're not the fastest, but they're not the slowest growing either. When you have plants that reached a certain size, they have enough leaves to photosynthesize and this will actually promote faster and faster growth. And I believe at some point this plant will probably have flowered and now we're going to visit its sibling sitting right behind it now this sibling was entered in this contest in this event i'm not sure the status if it's won or not but it's definitely a lot smaller than the previous plant that we saw that actually won number one but they are actually cut from the same plant and they both have a very very stable variegation as you can see here so if you're looking for something with a high quality and you have unlimited budget maybe you do want to consider reaching out to plan the plant they do have this and probably a lot more interesting plants in their nursery because again people are only bringing some of their best stuff to this show this next plant down below this is the philodendron whippleway and it was made popular probably by kaylee allen so anytime she talks about a plant it ex actually explodes in popularity and this is one of them and we don't have many people who have this in Indonesia but let me know if, if it's quite common in your area or not because actually all philodendrons all species have existed before it's really rare to find new species that are like created or newly discovered this is actually interesting because the leaves do gradually turn green over time as the new leaves are almost like white or creamy white with probably very little chlorophyll so you can imagine that this is probably a very very slow growing plant and that is also why they are so rare and expensive now I want to talk a little bit about this export booth this is by Titi Kijau and I've partnered up with them, with them before on my export event and they actually do have an export booth here because people from overseas can come to this event purchase the plants and they will be registered right here right now and the plants will be packed up this means the person can go back to their country in the next few days and bring the plant with them this is crazy amazing right so this is like hand picking the plants you can choose some of the variegated plants like for example this gloriosum here i'm really happy that it's sold you can pick, hand pick them out and then bring them without any shipping like risk, shipping cost. So this is a really, really good system and they definitely will be trying to bring more of this. And I will be announcing more on the channel if, if more events like this happen. And I really would love to support the local growers here because there are actually lots of really wonderful rare plants coming out from Indonesia. But there's sort of a disconnect with the export market because of the bureaucracy of shipping. Ex uh, phytosanitary and by the way the government is really helping in this event as well so they, the government uh, the export customs do have a booth here to expedite that process this is actually a booth from a Singaporean and a Thai friend it was actually full yesterday so I guess they sold out most of the things and greenspaces.id this is their booth so if you're living overseas and you're a plant person you probably have heard of them before because they do export a lot of rare plants worldwide. There's a huge philodendron Delano chrysum just hanging out back there. How amazing is that? So they are actually oh they actually do own a tissue culture lab and they have a huge growing facility. This is a really beautiful Patisserum elephantodis, by the way. So do check out their Instagram or they probably also have a professional website that you can check out their products in case you're interested. 
and there's like some spiritist sanctity action going on back there. They used to be unicorn plants, like nobody would have them and it would be impossible to see one. But now it's becoming more and more, I wouldn't say the word common, they're still very expensive and rare. This is the Philodendron Lelan Miano and I actually really love this one because each leaf is dramatically different from the rest. It looks like it's a key that fits a certain lock. And there are some alocasia, I think this is a Bambino variegated, but I might be wrong. I and there's just a lot of really interesting anthuriums, more anthuriums coming out, and those huge anthurium VGIs. Those are like legendary sizes. I don't know how long it will take to get to that size, but if you look from afar, they are in pristine condition. So they were grown with a lot of care and love. This is a philodendron caramel marble. This is actually a variegated plant that is not gone down in price. I don't know why. Uh, it's probably a slow growing plant from, I'm guessing, or maybe just difficult to propagate or produce. But this is on my wish list. It's actually got very beautiful variegation and love the leaf shape and the rosette form that it has. This is the Homolomina erubescens variegated. It's actually got beautiful red petiole. I don't know if you can see on the screen. And then some insanely variegated Alocasia Friedeck. Look at the variegation. This is insane. This is probably like dominantly variegated. And there are some huge anthuriums. I don't know what this is. I'm guessing this is probably the red crystal. But when they have produced inflorescence like this, they are probably ready to be breed, to be bred with one another, to be hybridized. So some of these mother plants can fetch a lot of money actually. And this is a beautiful form. I love that new leaf. There's a beautiful red tone on the leaves. Now this anthurium looks very curious to me. And I know this is an anthurium because of the inflorescence. And it's got this trilobe, this raptor claw like feature that I really quite adore actually. I love plants with these trilobes. And look at that again. Look at those veggie eyes. They literally have no burn or no spots on them. And next to it is the queen and theorem. So the king and the queen is sitting next to each other. Now I want you to bring your eyes to the leaves. They are in perfect condition. Now the white stuff is probably fungicide that's sprayed onto anthuriums. They do need to be treated with fungicide often. Now these are two very difficult anthuriums, the anthurium draconopterum and before that is argyrostachium. I actually bought them from Aquagenera and they both did not make it. They're actually quite finicky and they love humidity. They're quite impossible to rehabilitate. But once you get a plant that's already this size, it's probably very easy to just keep growing them. Of course, this is not a plant that ships very easily or very well. And and finally here, I was actually asked to be the judge for the number one plant of the show. So all of these plants that you see on the table are the number one plants for each genus or each category. So I'm supposed to look at every one of them and figure out which one is my favorite. Not my favorite, but one that I think is the best. And it's very subjective because these are all very different genus and different categories. But I actually chose this one, this specimen here, because it's really, really wonderfully variegated. It's also flowering profusely and every leaf is in perfect condition. This is one of the larger Monstera Burl Marks Flame that I've seen in the show so far. It's actually really, really rare and even the first leaf is still there. How amazing. This Aglonema is insane. None of the leaves are damaged you can still see down below that all the original leaves are intact and it's such a beautiful rosette pattern somebody took the time and effort to grow this out it must have taken years to get to this plant competitions are a norm here in indonesia and the people are really proud of the not only this collection but how they care for them and how they display them it is an integral part of the plant community and no event is complete without them this Sansevier, look at it from up above. It's so beautiful, it's perfect. If I had the chance, I would have voted this number two, probably. All right, so I guess that's all four episodes. In case you missed some of the older ones, feel free to check them out because I filmed them in no particular order. And with that being said, I hope that you guys are doing well, growing well, and I will see you in the next one.